What's the first thing that you think of when you hear the word crawl space? It's probably something along the lines of dirty, moldy, damp, bug infested, or for some people, something out of a horror film. But it doesn't have to be this way. In this video, we're going to talk about how to build a better crawl space that's clean, durable, energy efficient, and won't result in any future moisture issues. And the best part is that it doesn't actually cost that much more to do it the right way. Let's get into it. The biggest problem when it comes to crawl spaces is that we rarely delineate between the indoor and outdoor environment, and it's very much treated like this odd hybrid space where anything sort of goes. Oftentimes, builders will just put a loose sheet of polyethylene down, insulate the floor joists, and call it good, whether the crawl space was intended to be vented or conditioned, and we can end up with condensation issues. You'll often see bat insulation falling down in the crawl space because of this, you'll see puddles of water on the vapor barrier, and overall, it's an interstitial space that lacks any kind of control. It's even worse when the HVAC ductwork is located within an unconditioned crawl space, as duct leakage can end up pulling nasty air from the crawl space, which could easily bring with it air contaminants like mold, soil gases, humidity, dust, rat dropping particles, and many other things that you don't want to be breathing in. So our options are either to completely uncouple the crawl space from the floor assembly with an air barrier so that the air from the crawl space doesn't get into the interior space, or to locate the crawl space within the condition space. And that second option is what you want if you want the best possible crawl space. We actually have a whole video on the differences between vented and conditioned crawl spaces, which you can go and watch up here. But a conditioned crawl space is waterproofed, air sealed, insulated, and kept at the same interior conditions as the rest of the home, as it's temperature controlled and humidity controlled. You can run your ductwork freely within the space without any penalties or risks of bringing in any contaminated air into the home. And overall, it serves as an excellent interstitial space to run mechanical services. And with that being said, it makes maintenance on these services a breeze compared to a typical ventilated crawl space. Don't think of a conditioned crawl space as a typical crawl space, but more as a short, unfinished basement. But how do we make it the best that it can be? Let's walk through this crawl space detail and talk about what's going on here. You'll notice that this looks quite similar to a standard basement, minus the drywall or finishes, and that's because you want the crawl space to be located within the interior pressure boundary. Now a conditioned crawl space is not vented, it receives conditioned air from the interior, so no exterior crawl space vents whatsoever. The exterior walls of the crawl space are waterproofed and drained with a drainage mat down to a perimeter drainage tile that's set in a bed of crushed stone and wrapped in filter fabric, very similar to how we would address a basement. The drainage mat is important here because we want to alleviate hydrostatic pressure against those foundation walls. If we did have a buildup of water, let's say during a torrential downpour, the water would leak behind the drainage mat but would not be held in tension against the waterproofing. The waterproofing is the last line of defense here, and because we're conditioning the crawl space, we want to prevent any bulk water intrusion. Then we backfill with a free draining backfill material and cap the top with a semi-impervious surface to direct water away from the foundation and to prevent it from becoming subsurface water. Then on the interior side is where things get a lot more interesting. We put down that same polyethylene vapor barrier over the ground and tape it to the stem walls. However, we're insulating below it with some rigid insulation to reduce temperature differentials between the crawl space and the rest of the home. In some warmer climates, you can omit this rigid insulation layer, especially if you want to take advantage of the cooling benefits. Then we don't just stop with the vapor barrier. We pour a thin two inch concrete slab over the vapor barrier called a rat slab, and this is providing several key benefits to this assembly. If we pour this rat slab over the vapor barrier, the vapor barrier doesn't need to be airtight because the concrete slab is the air barrier, and when detailed correctly, will prevent the migration of soil gases like radon when combined with a sub-slab depressurization system. If we didn't have this rat slab, that vapor barrier would need to be perfectly airtight and taped at all the joints and seams and penetrations. While this may not seem like a big deal, any workers in the crawl space conducting maintenance or trades in the crawl space during construction have a high likelihood of puncturing that vapor barrier, and if that vapor barrier is intended to be airtight, you've now violated the air barrier. We actually have a whole video on this exact topic, which you can go and watch up here. So the rat slab is our air barrier, and it's a very nice stable substrate to crawl on if work needs to be conducted in the crawl space. 
Then we have our insulation for the stem walls, and you could choose either to insulate this from the interior or from the exterior, but we opt for insulating from the interior side if we're using rigid foam products, as this provides better protection and durability since bugs like to burrow into rigid foam. Now, the rigid foam board that we're using to insulate the stem walls is providing our condensation control in this assembly. It's continuous insulation that provides a complete thermal break. It has a relatively high R value per inch depending on the foam product that you specify. It's a vapor retarder, and when the joints are taped, it provides the benefits of an air barrier, and that's really the key to condensation control, as we don't want warm, moisture-laden air condensing on the cold concrete. That insulation layer transitions up between the floor joists and the rim joist, and is air sealed using a spray applied membrane. You could air seal each piece of rigid foam using a joint filler compound or expanding foam sealant, but this tends to be a lot more labor intensive. A lot of the time, closed cell spray foam is used to air seal this transition, with varying degrees of success. The point is that we want that connection to be airtight. Some other things to note, we have some mineral wool at that rim joist connection as well, which is serving as our fire blocking. And we're also making sure that that connection between the sheathing, the mud sill, and the concrete stem wall is airtight and watertight by applying a continuous fluid applied flashing at that seam to bridge that transition. We also have a capillary break between the mud sill and the stem wall to prevent capillary wicking. Now, there's a lot of other ways to have a successful conditioned crawl space. You could also do this with ICFs. There's ways to do this with rock wool and wood fiber insulation, but this is our preferred approach for long-term durability and performance. If you found this video helpful, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more weekly building science videos and head over to our website at asiri-designs.com where we have over 150 free building science articles that cover a wide range of topics. Links will be in the description below. For now, good luck with your projects. Cheers.